Good morning, I'm Anthony Berthel, I'm Atlas Tech Support Manager. All right, today we're gonna to be showing you guys how to use this multimeter and look at the startup conditions of our Hercules 2 VPL elevator. All the tools that are gonna be needed is a basic hand tools, uh, pliers and wrenches, and uh, a multimeter or a test light. So to remove the uh, front cover, it is going to be a 9 16th bolt to take off the front wall first. You have the two screws on the floor. And then we have two more behind. If you want to look at that. When I grab this and I slide it forward, there's always a tire app. So it's kind of cool to see how it's placed behind there. And especially here too, that's important. The way that it goes through that bracket. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut the tire app. So then that's it, we have access to inside. All right, so once she's fully open, the first thing we're gonna do is loosen up the bolts and take off the control box cover. And then we're gonna set our meter, meter to DC voltage. This is the V with the straight and dotted line on your meter. If you have a range, we're gonna put it at 200. Your black probe is always gonna to go to ground, so we have any metal that's non-painted. We have an extra screw right here, so what I like to do is set my ground right on the ground bar right there, and it just stays there. So the first thing that we test is coming from the batteries. It's a main battery bank that's coming down to our main fuse right here on the right side. So we can just come here, and we only can touch the fuse on the tip right here. And as we see, we have 27 volts. That's good. Our second test is to verify that the voltage is going through that main fuse. So all we have to do is test the opposite side. I know it's a black wire, but it's not a ground. It's still positive. So we're just going to go ahead and touch the left side of the fuse. My voltage is 27 as well. The fuse is good. So once we confirm that the main fuse has voltage on both of the sides, the next voltage point on our circuit is our primary 4 amp breaker. The voltage is coming from there. We're going to test the top pin of that breaker. You should be able to just slightly touch the metal terminal on the and get the voltage that you need. This voltage needs to be the same on both pins of the breaker. So once you got the top wire, you can go ahead and verify the lower terminal of it, which is 24 as well. If the breaker were to be popped out, that means it's deactivated. So you need to push it in so they be flush as so for it to be activated in the on position. 
If it's popped out, the breaker is popped. You need to push it back in. This is our stream limit switch. It needs to be not activated. If it ever is like so, the wheel is in. We grab the blue pin in the back. We pop the wheel back out. That means the switch is ready and not engaged. And that's what we want for travel. So once we follow that switch and make sure that it wasn't engaged, it comes underneath our T-bar and it goes to a two pin quick connector. We need to make sure that this is fully plugged in and it clips on. So the next part after we verified our quick connector is to verify the switches that are on our Deleron nut. So this is the two pair of switch micro switches on the Deleron nut. They're placed as so. What the switch we're looking at is the one that's directly on the Deleron nut itself, the one that's closest to the screw. We want to make sure that the wires that are connected to it are on the top angled pin and the bottom. The middle pin is not used. And on these wires, the two wires that are plugged to that switch have blacked terminal on it. So as you can see, it's a blue switch that we have blackened with permanent marker to indicate that it's the FO switch. That's the one on the back. So on our second test, once we uh, confirm that our extreme limit switch, our FO switch and our quick connectors are all properly connected, um, the next thing to do is assume that either one of the contacts inside the switch or, uh, or the FO switch here um, are just stuck open. So we'd have to test voltage in this case. So we'd open up the switch, test voltage on the two wires. The same thing on the two wires of our FO switch in all four terminals on our, our quick connector. They all should have 24 volts to ground. It's all the same circuit. And once we lose our voltage, we'll figure out exactly where the problem is. This is our COP, our control operational panel that I uh, removed from the wall that I removed earlier. I'm gonna come and just slightly plug it in. We have a safety on it, which is our, our <clears throat> emergency stop button. Make sure that's plugged in and that it's pulled out. So we're gonna start off by testing our emergency stop button in the cab. Uh, our voltages are on the side on the CN16 number 10 is our first point. So we'd measure voltage uh, to, to, to 12, measure voltage on the side of the panel, always to ground. And then number 13 is our second point. If number 13 does not have voltage and only number 12, we need to follow our traveling cable down to our COP connections. Firstly, make sure that it's properly connected all the way in. And then we test the same wires. So we had number 12 and 13 at the panel. It's wires 12 and 13 on the traveling cable. Each wire of the traveling cable is labeled with numbers. So you can see here number 13. They're really hard to see, but if you turn the wires around, you should be able to figure it out. If not, they're all in order one through 20. So if I go back here for number 12, I have my voltage. And the next one after is 13. The voltage goes through here. Basically, it's in our emergency stop button. So you see the red button behind the red button. For this safety, it is our pink contact. That's our safety normally closed. We should have voltage on one side and the other. So you just touch the screw here. And then you can touch the screw on the other side. Voltage should go through if the button is pulled out. If it does not, the contact has an issue. So on mostly of our quick ship units in our residential elevators, we don't have a lower door. We just have the flap. Um, our elevator in that case still needs to think that the elevator has a door so it knows it's safe to take off. So you can see on CN16 on the right side here, 
we have a little jumper. Um, this jumper is called I-1, not 11. It's I-1 for interlock level one. Since we do not have it, I'm bypassing that circuit, putting voltage on 14 and also 15. So to make the upper interlock, our top gate uh, unlock, we need the elevator to come up and stop flush at the landing we want it to. So this is gonna be with the upper switch. You're able to adjust it by sliding it up or down on the can truss to make sure it's at the right height to activate on the lower cam here when you want it to stop. So now I'm gonna come up, we're gonna see how it stops on its cam. And we're gonna unlock the upper door. So you saw, I'm still holding the button. Right as it activated the switch, the elevator stopped. It is still flush with the landing. I'm still holding the button. And it did not unlock the door. It's really when I release the button that I can open the door and it can go ahead. If I wait a couple of seconds and then the timer times out, the door will automatically relock itself. As we can just hear, maybe if you heard it, it's relocked. I didn't have time to get out. I was got a phone call or whatever. Just re-tap the up button and it'll re-unlock the door for you. Same thing with the outer call station. So once we firstly did our startup conditions and the elevator ran up, but it doesn't want to come back down, that means we may have an underpan obstacle or a switch or wiring. So we're going to check that out. Um, what we need to do for half of this test is actually put our multimeter in continuity, resistance ohms, and we're going to put it between three and four, which is SP, our safety pan. Right now, I have a constant beep through these two circuits. That means that my safety pan is closed and that is uh, safe, so it should be able to come down. If it was to be open and it would say OL for open loop, on your meter, then we would need to go and check the following. So if we looked at our underpan circuit and it did have no continuity, so OL on our multimeter, we're gonna come back down here. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the two micro switches again that we looked at earlier for our FO switch. But now we're gonna be looking at the front switch. The two switch should be not activated, so you should be able to click it. And it should be plugged in top angle and bottom pin. Like I said earlier, we do not use the middle pin. The two wires that plug into it are gonna be the ones that are not painted. Those wires follow out through a quick connector again. So it's the same type of quick connector as we had for our extreme limit switch, but we won't be able to mix it up because they are female and male inverted. So you can't mix up the underpan with the extreme limit switch. So once again, just make sure it's fully plugged in. So we're going to verify our underpan on this circuit. So what we did is we tested on our continuity panel on three and four. It did not have continuity. We looked throughout um, the micro switch on the screw drive and our quick connector, and those also rained out good. So now we're looking at the underpan itself. First thing to do is to test and physically slowly push up on each corner to physically here click and unclick the micro switch that's on that corner. So I grab this corner. You can hear it click, that is good. And the other two corners as well. You hear it click. If it does not click on you, and then we know that switch is a problem and we need to make sure that uh, we fix it. So the next step would be just to remove the underpan and look at the micro switches. They're the same type of micro switches we were looking at earlier. They have the same connection points. So we wanna make sure that it's top and bottom pin, we do not use the middle, and that the switch clicks and unclicks. If the switch is activated, it is not good. We need them to be released. Once we stopped on our uh, lower landing switch, and we stopped at the correct position, 
we want to just verify that we're not on the safety pan. We want to make sure that the safety pan always stays not activated. So another continuity test between three and four confirms that I'm stopping properly on my landing switch and my safety pan is still closed. 